Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome to MOOC NPTEL course on Bioengineering and interface with Biology and Medicine. In the last few lectures, I try to give you some of the problem statements, some bigger problems towards which all of us have to work together, whether we are biologists or engineers, actually you know we have to think about the goal of how to solve those major problems. I also try to provide you an interface with clinicians to give you some motivation that in which way engineering discipline can help medical scientists and clinicians for our day to day you know medical problems. To understand in which way the medical field can also benefit from the engineering tools and various insights uh, you can bring in now from the engineering point of view. In this slide I thought it might be good idea to introduce you to some of the bioinformatics tools. Sometime even if you do not have an opportunity to work in a wet laboratory uh, to do the experiments yourself we can actually obtain lot of data which is publicly available nowadays in different databases and repositories. And then if you know some of the open access software and tools, you can then try to download the data available already and then make use of that data and then try to understand in which way people are studying genes and proteins. So, that is something which you can do from your own system, your own computers by sitting in your own room, you need not to work in a laboratory setup. So, even uh, before we dig deeper into the fundamental concepts, I thought it is good idea to begin with some of the bioinformatics assignment. To do this, I will take help of one of my teaching assistants, uh, we will first uh, you know try to understand and explain you about you know uh, more information how you can retrieve for a given gene. So, in my previous lectures I had talked to you about you know how people target specifically a given gene, look at their sequences and how you can use technologies like polymerase chain reaction to amplify the genes. So, first of all you know, now how to get a gene sequence again you need to use the bioinformatics tools. You can go to NCBI portal where you can enter the gene name or accession ID and then you will see how much information is already available for that given gene. Then uh, in the tutorial sections you will see in a step wise manner how this assignment could be performed. So, I will hand it over now to uh, my TA. And uh, after doing this assignment, we will also give you uh, some problem statements and some assignment which you can do at your own place. I am uh, Apurva Venkatesh. Uh, I am a finally a PhD student uh, under Professor Sanjeev Srivastav and I am your TA for this course. This bioinformatics assignment will teach you how to study genes using NCBI and their evolutionary relationships. NCBI provides a variety of databases and computational tools which are freely accessible for use by the research community. NCBI is also home to PubMed which many of you may have used for literature searches. In today's assignment, we will learn how to retrieve the sequence of a gene, how to identify similar sequences and how to compare multiple sequences to study their evolutionary relationships. Let us begin with the first question. You have been given an accession number. 3040, which is a unique identifier given to a DNA or protein sequence. We need to fill this table by getting all the information about this gene. So, let us get started. It would be great if you could do this along with me on your computers. Type NCBI into your Google browser. So, this brings us to the NCBI website. We will not be able to explore all the features of NCBI today. However, I would highly recommend that you go through some of these resources after this tutorial. You can begin with the how to link that is up here. This will teach you how to accomplish specific tasks at NCBI. Now, I am going to click this link and this will give us a list of how to's. For example, you may want to know how to retrieve all sequences for an organism or taxon. You may want to know how to find the function of a gene or gene product. View all SNPs associated with a gene. Or you may want to know how to obtain the full text of an article. 
So on the left is a list of resources that NCBI provides. You may want to use some of them depending on your objectives. So now let's get back to our assignment. The first thing we will have to do is to type the accession number in the box here and click Gene from the drop down menu. Now we say search. So this page will give us all the details we are looking for. Please fill the table as we move along. Our first task is to find out the gene name. So this gene encodes a subunit of the protein hemoglobin. I am sure you have heard of this protein earlier. Hemoglobin is a protein molecule in red blood cells that carries oxygen from the lungs to body tissues. Here you can see that this page was last updated on 24 December 2017. The official gene symbol is HbA2. But however, you will also see from this list that not everyone uses this official symbol in their publications. This can also be called HbH, HbA, T2, etc. Gene type is a protein coding gene. And this summary here gives us information about the gene and its functions. Now if you scroll down further, you will see genomic, genomic context. So genomic context describes where the gene resides. So this gene resides on chromosome 16 in the P arm at 13.3 region. Now if you scroll down further, this section here shows us the direction in which the gene is read. So this particular gene HbA2 is read towards the right. Now we scroll down further and we go and click on HbA2 to get us more details about this gene. So this will give us the length which is 864 base pairs. So if you click on this gene, you will get all the information on the gene. And if you further click on this green section, you will get information on the messenger RNA as well as on the translated protein. So now let's zoom into one particular section of this gene. And click zoom. Now if you zoom into one of the locations, you will be able to see the variations associated with this gene. Darker the color, more deadly the variation. So notice this particular variation. As you will notice this is in a very dark color. This indicates a very deadly variation and if you zoom into this particular section, you will notice that this also has a PubMed citation. So now let's scroll upward. You will see that this gene belongs to Homo sapiens obviously because this is human hemoglobin subunit alpha 2 gene. This particular organism belongs to the super kingdom eukaryota. To know more about this organism, we can go and click onto this link. And we can click onto genome to get more information about the genome of this organism. As you know that this particular gene belongs to chromosome 16. So we go to chromosome 16 and you will see that the size of this chromosome is 90.34 megabases and it encodes 1920 genes. So with this information you will be able to complete this table. Now let's go back to our assignment. What we have is a gene ID 3040. NCBI helped us fill in all these details. The official full name hemoglobin subunit alpha 2. Date of last update 24 December 2017. The gene symbol is HbA2. It's a protein coding gene. The location is on chromosome 16 in the P arm at region 13.3. The size of the gene is 864 bases. The organism is Homo sapiens. 
In the super kingdom eukaryota, the size of the chromosome 16 is 90.34 megabases, which encodes 1920 genes. So this brings us to the end of the first part of this assignment. The next assignment is a very small one. You have been asked to enter the FASTA sequence of this gene in the box below. So let's go to NCBI website again. Let's type 3040 in the search box. We type gene and press search. So this brings us to the same page. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see FASTA here. If you click on FASTA, you'll get this particular nucleotide sequence for this gene. This is the FASTA sequence. Let's copy this sequence and enter it in the box. So this brings us to the end of assignment 1B. Alright, so you are now familiar with looking at genes and sequences and what all information one could obtain just by doing simple bioinformatic analysis, right? So now let us go one step further. Uh, let us study how to compare sequences of one particular gene between different organism and to see how similar or different they are. Similarly, we will also compare the protein sequences and I am sure you will understand that the proteins are much more complex than DNA and by comparing protein sequences across different organisms, one could actually uh, find out lot of information which is biologically relevant and it may sometimes give us the clues for even process like evolution how it has happened. Such sequence similarity searches can actually also help us to do uh, to study evolutionary relationship or it can allow us to identify the proteins with similar functions. So, this type of analysis uh, which you can do using bioinformatics tools is known as multiple sequence alignment and it can be best performed using various open access tools including the cluster W or cluster omega which we are going to demonstrate you in the tutorial section. Before we move on to the next assignment, I would like to talk to you about a very popular feature of NCBI known as BLAST. BLAST stands for basic local alignment search tool. It allows you to take an input sequence and compare it to a database to see if anything similar has already been found. It can be very useful for studying unknown sequences or if you want to see how similar your sequence is to other sequences. The most commonly used feature is nucleotide blast. So let us click on N blast which is nucleotide blast. This will take us to the blast page where you will see that we need to enter a query sequence which is nothing but our input sequence which we need to search against a database. Let us take the FASTA sequence of the hemoglobin alpha chain that we just pasted. You can choose a human database if you know your protein is a human protein or a mouse database or if you want to see results from other species you can choose other. We will click on other. This drop down menu here gives us a list of many databases. We will select nucleotide collection which is a combination of all nucleotide databases. Now let's click blast. Here you will see a whole bunch of red lines which BLAST has found. These represent sequences similar to our input sequence. Top one here is our query sequence which goes from 1 to 864 base pair. The colors here tell us how closely the results match our query or input sequence and the length of these bars tells us how much they line up with our query. So you will see there are some which line up perfectly while some do not. When you scroll down, you will get a list of sequences producing significant alignments. You have a maximum score, a total score and a query cover 
which is the percentage match with the query and an E value which is the measure of how likely something can occur by chance. Lower the E value, better the result. You will notice that the first few matches have 100% query cover which means that they are 100% identical. While you will also see that as you go lower down this table, you will find matches with different species. The alignment section which is further below here gives you the actual nucleotide sequences and matches for each of the results. For example, in the first case, there is a 100% match, therefore no gaps. So now let's get back to our assignment. You have been given a protein accession ID which is NP000508.1. You have to get details for this protein using NCBI. We have done this before for a gene. We will now do the same for this particular protein. Let's type the accession ID in the search box. So let's type the accession ID in the search box. And now we will select protein from this drop down menu. And click search. So here you will see a very similar to what we saw for, for the gene. You can actually get all the details for this particular protein. So the protein name is hemoglobin subunit alpha. The organism name is homo sapiens. The sequence length is 142, 142 amino acids. The locus is NP000508. And now when we run a blast search, So now let's run a blast search and select PDB here. The accession number is given in this particular query box and we click on blast. So this particular page will give you details about the BLAST search. As you'll see here, very similar to what we saw earlier. Just as you saw earlier, there are 106 BLAST hits on 100 subject sequences. And you'll find similar bars here, which represent similar sequences. And if you scroll down further, you will see that the first hit is identical to your query sequence. And you will take the PubMed ID from here, which is your PubMed accession ID. So now let's go back to our assignment and fill the table. The details for this protein are, the protein name is hemoglobin subunit alpha, the organism name is homo sapiens, sequence length is 142 amino acids, the locus is NP000508, the number of blast hits 106 and the PDV ID. In the fourth part of the tutorial, you have been given a list of accession IDs. You need to find how these sequences are evolutionarily. In the fourth part of the tutorial, you have been given a list of accession IDs. You have to find out how these sequences are evolutionarily related. For this, we will type all the accession IDs in the search box on NCBI homepage. Now we'll choose protein from the drop down menu. And we'll click search. We'll now be able to see all five proteins on a single page. So we don't have to go to each protein individually to take the FASTA sequence. Simply click on summary and click on FASTA.
or we can also go to fast start text so that we get all sequences on one page. So let's copy them, go to Google browser and type Clustal Omega. Clustal Omega is a multiple sequence alignment program. It allows us to perform multiple sequence alignments of divergent sequences. Evolutionary relationships can be seen via cladograms or phylograms. Copy the FASTA files into the box here, keeping all other default parameters constant, click submit. So as you will see, the sequences of all the 5 proteins are lined up against each other. If you select show colors, you can visualize variations and gaps in the sequences. Now click on the phylogenetic tree to get an idea about the evolutionary relationships. What you see here is a cladogram. This is a neighbor joining tree without distance corrections. Now let's copy this into our document. So let us paste the cladogram in this document. You will see here that A and B are closely related while D is somewhat related to A and B, while C and E are distantly related from all. So this is how you get an idea about evolutionary relationships. This brings us to the end of the bioinformatics assignment 1. Hope this was very useful. Thank you. Alright, so in conclusion, I am sure you are now convinced that just by doing bioinformatic analysis using some uh, open access tools, you can get a lot of understanding of biologically relevant information. In this ass assignment, we slowly built your you know, confidence. We provided you some information for looking at the gene, its sequences, its sequence homology and different similarity with other sequences. We then tried to explain you how computational tools could be used to study the evolutionary relationship just based on the protein sequences. In another lecture in the coming week, we will also try to study how to visualize protein structures and protein-protein interactions using some of the bioinformatic tools. We will also study the pathway analysis and we will learn how to perform molecular simulation and docking experiments to study the protein-drug interactions. Thank you and see you next week.